All right, guys, I am back with a brand new DC update, and we're going to look at some interesting things here today. Uh, first, I'm going to start off talking about why I do not trust James Gunn in the position he's in, and I'm going to show you an interesting post on Twitter today, and we're going to look at how the majority of the people have the exact same fear as I do. And I brought this up in the past, and I will tell you that going forward, I'm going to try to be less critical of James Gunn. I'm still going to talk about him, and I will still continue to talk about how I think he's bad for DC. But I'll try to be a little less critical because I don't want to be just a channel talking about negative stuff. My point is, I hope this stuff is successful, but I'm going to talk about why I don't think it's going to be successful. First of all, for me, James Gunn had a recent interview where he talked about how he can't stand superheroes, how he thinks they're silly, and how he can't see somebody dressing up like Batman or Superman could ever walk out in public without being ridiculed and being ridiculous. That's how he views superheroes. That's not a good look for somebody who's in charge of an entire universe of superheroes. I saw how he traded both Peacemaker and Vigilante in Peacemaker. These were nothing like their comic counterparts at all, and they were silly and ridiculous. And Oftentimes, it was extremely juvenile and disgusting. It had its moments, but 90% of it was juvenile and disgusting. You also had the end of Peacemaker, where the Justice League shows up, and you have Barry and Arthur Curry talking about screwing fish. Uh, ridiculous. He made a joke out of them. We look at what he did in Peacemaker. A lot of those characters didn't match their comic counterparts, and it also had a lot of disgusting and crazy, cringy humor in it, whereas he had some nice moments in there, but it was mostly disgusting juvenile humor. This is the guy who's in charge of DC. He took better care of the stuff over at Marvel, but even over at Marvel, those things were not taken seriously, and those characters did not match a lot of their comic counterparts. So I don't think he's the right guy. Now, we're going to look at a post that someone did this morning and my feelings on this. So here was the post by Our Movie News. He said, something that hurt the comic movie genre is the fact that Marvel and DC tried to copy what James Gunn did with Guardians of the Galaxy and use it for every comic book movie they released. His first film was great, in my opinion, but it was a unique take. It was a nice contrast from the grounded and more serious approach of the other MCU movies. It did something different. When it came out, most of the humor caught me off guard because of how unique it was. No other superhero, no other superhero film had done it before, but now every movie does it. So we're getting high saturations of comedies, but we're getting worse. But but they are getting worse with every release because none of them can do it as well as James Gunn did with Marvel. And I think that is causing Gunn to make worse comic book projects. I think the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker are significantly worse than his MCU work. I totally agree with this. Work because he is trying to differentiate himself from the crowd that copied him. He is going a bit more extreme and pushing the boat out too much with those two projects. I think what we need is to return to original structure, mainly grounded in more serious takes on superheroes. Not every movie being dark, but ones where characters take things seriously with humor sprinkled here and there, and then have directors like Gunn with his unique comedies to add something different to the mix. Thoughts? Now, I don't want Superman Legacy to be a comedy at all, okay, but he's absolutely right. And what I said here is, this is the fear of almost everyone now. Only a small minority have blind faith in James Gunn. Everything points to a goofy take going forward. This is why I keep saying James Gunn has to prove himself with Superman Legacy. Uh, Emmanuel Martinez came out and said, Warner Brothers Discovery are making comedies comedy movies with superheroes instead of superhero movies with comedy. And I said 100% true. Absolutely true. So this is why I don't see that he's the right guy to be in charge of these properties. I would love to be proven wrong, but he is going to have to prove himself. He is not going to just get blind support from me because I am basing my opinion and what I feel is going to happen in the future based on everything he has done in the past. And the optics from the outside in don't look good when he is writing and directing everything when he was hired to be the co-CEO. Back, you can go watch my videos back when he was announced. I took a wait-and-see attitude. But then he started announcing his slate, stabbing 
Henry Cavill in the back and redoing everything. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And then all these other things start coming out. And you look at his past work and you look at those signs. This is what most people feel. Now we're going to look at some photos today. The first two are going to be James Gunn centric. And we're going to talk about a few things. And then we're going to talk about this Netflix, uh, the, the Netflix earnings report and what this means for the DCEU moving forward and everything that was announced yesterday. So let's take a look at some of these photos. So the first photo I have is a quote from James Gunn where he said, actors and filmmakers that I work with are going to say things I, that I agree with and things that I don't agree with. I can't be changing my plans all the time because an actor says something that I don't agree with. He's basically saying my road or the highway. He is not going to change what he wants. He's basically saying I'm in charge. I'm doing what I want to do. And people like Henry Cavill left projects on Netflix because they started to sway from source material on stuff. And I've never seen anybody sway so far from the source material the way Gunn does, and he gets away with it because certain groups of people like it. And that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And I have a fear that he's going to be doing this with the projects he's working on with DC. This goes back to what he said at the beginning of, of taking over, and I'm going to talk about the people he's actually talking about. He said, one of the things Peter and I were aware of when we took the job as heads of DC Studios was a certain minority of people online that could be, well, uproarious and unkind, to say the least. Who he's talking about here are his followers. I've never seen a more negative, disgusting group of people than the people who plain, just blindly follow James Gunn and all they can talk about is Zack Snyder and how horrible Zack Snyder was and how if you like Zack Snyder stuff, you are a cultist. If you like the DCEU, you are a cultist. And they say all kinds of disgusting things online. I've never seen anything like it anywhere. And I get a lot of that hate. It's ridiculous. Now, it's pretty crazy stuff. And I actually had a post. We're going to talk about Netflix here, but I want to talk about something first. So we're going to talk about Netflix's earnings report. And before I do this, I want to talk about something that's interesting here. The other day on Twitter, there was one individual who came out and said, you know, Scott Stuber, the head of the film division, the, the guy who single-handedly brought in Zack Snyder and started Rebel Moon and everything, stepped down the day before the earnings report came out. Now, he's going to be staying on until March, but his departure was announced the day before the earnings report. And one individual came in and said, this is never a good sign when it comes to business, when they announce a departure the day before the earnings report. The earnings report is going to be horrible. Uh, Rebel Moon tanked Netflix. It's go it, it's going to it caused him to lose his job, and Rebel Moon is likely done moving forward. There won't be no part three, uh, and and Snyder's you know contract is going to get canceled. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I said you can say this, but the fact is, you know, part two is already locked in, and it actually was a success for Netflix. If you look at what they consider to be a, a success based on the amount of money they spent on the movie, they got way more streams than they needed to consider that movie a really good success. And you can't take that away. You have to go by Netflix's own parameters that have always been in place. And it exceeded those to become a hit for Netflix. But we're going to find out just how much of a hit it was for them. Even though it didn't get as many streams as a lot of people were expecting, it had another unexpected uh, unexpected effect on Netflix, and we're going to take a look at this. Now, real quick, before I talk about the Netflix thing, I forgot to show this one photo, and I wanted to talk about this. A lot of people have sent this my way to say if this is real, and I got to tell you guys, this is not real. First of all, the head's a little bit too big for the body, and this was photoshopped from Henry Cavill, and if they do decide to use that suit again, that's going to upset a lot of people. That would be a terrible move for them to go in that direction to use the same suit that they used with Man of Steel and in Zack Snyder's Justice League and Batman versus Superman. You can't do that. You can't do that. You're going to piss off a whole bunch of people. So I can guarantee you guys that this is not true. So this was put out by The Hollywood Reporter right before the earnings report came out. And it said, global streaming giant Netflix is gearing up to report its fourth quarter in full year 2023 earnings after the market closed on Tuesday, January 23rd. And its progress in building its advertising tier to scale and growth following a third quarter gain of 9 million subscribers. Are, these are all going to be the topics in the Wall Street's focus. Among the streamer's big content launches of the final quarter of 2023 were the likes of Squid Game, The Challenge, new seasons of Lupin and Sex Education, 
the Money Heist spinoff of Berlin, the conclusion of The Crown, award season contenders such as Bradley Cooper's Maestro and Todd Haynes' May December, Ardman Animation's Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget, and Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. And the only major release in there, I would say, is Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. That's the one that had all the buzz and was being advertised. These other things were definitely things people were going to see, but we're going to see what the effect of Rebel Moon had on Netflix. Hollywood Reporter then added, Netflix adds 13 million subscribers in Blockbuster Earnings Report. What? They were not expecting anywhere near 13 million. In fact, we're going to look at what they expected. The company reported it added 13.1 million subscribers in the December quarter, its largest fourth quarter subscriber growth ever, handily exceeding projected gains of 8.97 million. They got 50% more than what they were expecting. That doesn't happen by accident. There was something that drove that. And what do you think drove that? It was Rebel Moon. That brings the total number of subscribers to 260 million. They gained 5% of their subscriber count in that one quarter alone. For a company that's been around that long, that's a pretty big feat. The company credited gains to the strength of its intellectual property, including Squid Game The Challenge, a reality show based on its most watched TV series, new original series, such as All, All the Light We Cannot See, Feature films like Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon, A Child of Fire, and non-English language programming, including the third season of Lupin from France. It also cited strong demand for licensed titles. And we're going to talk about this here, how it says it also cited strong demand for licensed titles. Because one of the things it talked about was that they're not going to really be doing any more, any more acquisitions of licensed projects. They're just not going to be focusing on on that in the future. And we're going to look at something that the head of the company said here in a minute. Netflix's Sarando says film strategy will not change with the exit of Scott Stuber, which is not true because they even said in that earnings report that they're going to stop really with a lot of the acquisitions of IP or not IPs, uh, that they're going to be getting away from licensed projects, that they're going to be moving away from that kind of stuff. So the strategy is changing. Now, back when Rebel Moon got released, Stuber got up there and said, you know, the more Zach we have on our platform, the better. He has a great home here. Scott Stuber is not the only guy that works there. If you think the buck stops with him, that isn't true. And that statement was not strictly coming from him. That was a statement crafted by Netflix for him to talk about. I can guarantee you that was not just his willy-nilly thing coming up there and saying this. And a lot of people said, well, the movie didn't get as many streams as you expected. Oh, it may not have gotten as high as people were expecting, but you have to remember the second part comes out in April. The first part is going to get a big bump then, and then we're also going to get the extended versions in the summer. So there's going to be big bumps moving forward. So it's not done with its streaming numbers, not by a long shot. And outside of that, it doesn't matter. Everyone online talked about how the without those... Without subs, it doesn't mean anything. They they make money off of subs. Well, that, that movie single-handedly brought in way more subscribers than they could have possibly imagined, 50% more. And if you think all those people went there to see the new Chicken Run movie or the Squid Show, you are sadly mistaken. It was all because of Rebel Moon and the decisions that Scott Stuber had made. So this individual on Twitter that I was talking about a little while ago was talking about how that report was going to be terrible and that things were over. And then all this stuff comes out and I showed him how awesome everything was. And then he started to show how they're show the statement that they're not going to be purchasing anymore. Not that they wouldn't purchase anymore, that they're going to move away from purchasing licensed projects in the future. And then he goes on to say, I showed him how profitable it was and and how many subs came in. And he goes, it doesn't matter. The Snyderverse is over. And I'm like, when was I even talking about the Snyderverse? You know, This is the mentality of these people. Anytime you try to argue with them, they change the goalpost. The fact is, things can still happen over there at Netflix. So let's talk about this. This doesn't mean the DCU is definitively over, that they're never going to acquire another license. Stuber talked about how if they could get that IP, they would. Or not IP, that license, they would. They are going to focus more on IP stuff. And one of the things that Netflix is doing doing is moving into the 
live sports category, and they're going to have the WWE and some other stuff on there. And they're going to be raising prices for everybody. They talked about this, how with all this new content they're bringing in, they're going to have to raise prices. Well, you're going to lose me as a sub. I will tell you that because I, I'm not on Netflix for live sports. Sorry. I'm on there for stuff like Rebel Moon. I'm on there for stuff like Wednesday and for Stranger Things. I'm on there for their original content. Uh, and also some of the stuff that they license out. They're picking up a lot of licenses. They just licensed all the stuff from Warner Brothers, and that helps Warner Brothers make money. If you think that Netflix is just going to stop altogether purchasing licensed projects, you're sadly mistaken. That is not the case. That doesn't mean the DCU is over, guys. There is still a possibility they could acquire it and want to acquire it. We're going to have to see what Rebel Moon does with the next two parts, but it already brought in a crap ton of subscribers. So it's a hit, no matter how you look at it. With the streams, it was a hit. Whether you want to believe it or not, it didn't get as many streams as people were hoping, but it was still a hit. And as far as the subscriber count, holy crap, that's a huge win for Netflix. Because now a lot of those people will just stay on and continue with their subs. But I'll tell you, if they raise prices, they're going to lose a lot of people. I think in the end, we're going to see Netflix go on a downward spiral if they don't if they don't have the right analyst, you know, guiding them in the right direction. Stuber going off on his own, he's going to start his own media company, and there is a possibility that he may create a streamer of his own, which would be interesting to see. I think a lot of these streamers are getting away from what made them popular to begin with, and Netflix has always been kind of on that right track with purchasing, you know, some of the stuff that they do to get people to watch and to subscribe. And if they start going away from that and they just want to do live sports and think, yeah, that's going to bring in a bump of people, but you're saying you're giving the middle finger to the people that got you to where you are. And so I hope they don't lose their lose their focus. But that, 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 nothing's over, guys. Nothing has changed. I'm still going to advocate for sell Zack Snyder's Justice League to Netflix, sell the DCU to Netflix. I, I still think that is a viable possibility. All right, so what do you guys think about all of this news? What do you think about Rebel Moon? What do you think about Netflix? What do you think about what James Gunn is doing? Please chime in below. I do appreciate all the support. We will see you on the next video.